stones be rolled away. He's alive again. He's no longer where he lays. He's alive again. I can hear the angels sing. Everybody, let's sing together. He's alive again. He's alive again. He's no longer where he lay. He's alive again. I can hear the angels sing. The whole world rejoices. He's alive. Let's sing together one more time. All the stones be rolled away. He's alive again. He's no longer where he lives. He's alive again. I can hear the angels sing. The whole world rejoices. Okay, sing like somebody rejoicing now. He's alive again. All the stones be rolled away. sharing on Friday, um, Good Friday. Like Pastor Ike said, somebody asked him, now why is it called Good Friday? Considering that that was a very painful day. Okay. For him, it was painful. For us, it was gainful. So we call it Good Friday because it's good for us. Isn't it? So we started sharing on Friday that's Easter Friday, that his pain became our gain. Okay? If he never went through that pain, uh, we can't be standing here. I don't know about you. Maybe you are born again from your mother's womb. But someone like me definitely will not be here. If not by his pain. Okay? Um, as we were singing that song, um, I knew my future is good because he's, he's alive. He died for me. Then a thought came to my spirit. Sometime he needs to get very dark before he can get very bright. Do you get that? I don't know. The thought just came. Sometime he needs to get very what? Dark. For he to be very bright. No one knows the value of light until darkness is around. During the day, during a very sunny day, your touch light will have no value. But when it's very dark in the night, even your phone light will make a lot of difference. And you know, the Bible says darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness, the people. He said, during that time, we will be shining. So, Friday night was so dark, but Sunday morning became the brightest day. A Savior resurrected from the grave. So, we started sharing that um, 
His father allowed him to go through that pain so we can have the gain. According to Isaiah 53, we read the old chapter. Please, I'd like you to note it. Isaiah 53 is considered the gospel in the Old Testament. In fact, in theological seminary, we call it the gospel in embryo. The whole chapter of Isaiah 53 speaks about the birth, the death, the resurrection, the glorification of Jesus and the life that we are supposed to live thereafter. So, I, I have seven points from there which I want us to share quickly before um, we step further today. Number one, we share that he was betrayed on that night. Um, his best, one of his best friends betrayed him. The disciples were to be his best friend. The disciples were to be his co-laborers. The people he shared his destiny with. The people he shared his secret with. The people he told everything. The people he impacted betrayed him. Okay? It is not betrayal if you don't love the person. It becomes betrayal if you what? If you love the person. If there is no love, no association between two people, if one person bolt out or break away, it's not betrayal. It becomes betrayal when you have invested your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have invested love. You have cared for this person. And um, he actually knows everything about you. Your secret, your wrongs, your right. And all of a sudden, without informing you, he just breaks off. And um, in the instance of Jesus, it was deeper than that. Okay? How can you betray your Lord with a kiss? Huh? Friendly betrayer. You are, you are friendly to me, yet you are what? You are betraying me. You are killing me, yes, you are greeting me. You are appreciating me, and yet you are murdering me. That is Judas Iscariot. But you know there are many generations of Judas Iscariot in church today, unfortunately. And people don't learn that when you betray a righteous person, you are following his stead. Whatever happened to that person, you are going to share part of it. People don't know. So it is better not to be a friend to somebody than to be a friend to a person and betray that person. Because I like us to note that. It doesn't have to be a pastor. It doesn't have to be a believer. There is something that fights the people that betrays. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? You can't just betray a person that is good to you and hope to go scot-free. It doesn't happen that way. Something is going to come back. Whatever it's called. It's going to what? It's going to come back. I'm just trying to be practical, but we know deeper in the realm of the spirit there is something deeper than that. But you know, the Bible says in the last days, there will be truth breakers. Have you seen that? Truth breakers. That is part of the peril of the last days. People don't know that sometimes they fulfill the scripture in the negative. There will be truth breakers. People you keep your secret with and they just break you and just betray you. So that night, Jesus was betrayed. Number two, he was rejected. He was rejected. John chapter 1 verse 11 says he came to his own and his own received him not. The very people he died for refused him. It could be very painful when you have done your best for someone and yet you are still rejected. It's always very painful. Verse 3. So I said verse 3. Number 3. Okay. He was wrongly accused. 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 Wow. Listen to this. Accusation is the raw material for greatness. What did I say? Uh, say after me. Say after me. Accusation, Accusation. is the raw material for greatness. That was what he told me this morning. How many want to be great? So be ready to be falsely accused. He said, accusation, the more the stones of accusation people throw to you, uh, that, that, that becomes your stepping stones into greatness. Look at this. He was accused of using Beelzebub. Can you imagine? Jesus the Lord. <laughs> people know they fail. Huh? People know they wait, eh? 
People know they fear. Fear, I know they fear people. Oh. They look at Jesus, the Savior. Okay, majority of them never accepted him to be the Savior anyway. According to the scriptures, they just felt he's one, one person like that. Is he not Joseph, is he not Joseph's son? The what? Talk to me, church. The what? The carpenter. The carpenter. So, he's calling himself the Savior. Says God is going to use him to win the world. God is going to, ah, is he not? We know him. In fact, we knew him when he was very young. Do you know that people that doesn't accept you, we keep reminding every new person around you your past errors? Huh? Ah, I know him. We know him. He's been, you know, we've been there before. We know all his errors. You are just starting. You'll soon see it too. What is he trying to do? What is he trying to do? Poison the heart of the new person because he felt that can't be. But one thing I've noticed is this. You don't look like your destiny at the beginning of your life. Do you? Nobody does. Nobody. But either you look like it or not, if you believe God has planted it in you, you fulfill it. They said it's, it's Joseph, Joseph's son. He used Bezabob. They accused him of being the what? The king of the Jews. In fact, they wrote it on as a mockery. As a what? As a mockery. On his on the cross. Say, so here is the king of the Jews. They are mocking him. If you are king now, come down and what? And save yourself. Can you imagine? He was saving the man that was abusing him. Please, can we learn from these little, little things that don't let the bad behavior of people to you change you? Are we together? If you are the good, keep being good. People you are being good to may not even appreciate you. They may even be the ones speaking you down. Don't let them change you. Just go ahead. After some couple of years, they will realize. But that time, it will be too late. It's always like that. Sometimes we don't need to pray for it to happen. It's, it's, like, it's like a principle that has been set by nature. Or maybe spiritual thing, I don't understand. But it's just there that people you try to help and they speak all against you. You don't need to pray. One day, they will remember and they will know. But it will be what? Jubilate. It's always like that. He said he's the king of the Jew. And you know, Jesus said, um, I'll break down this temple and build it in three days. Okay, he was talking about his physical body as the temple. But they accused him. They even took him to court. They, can you imagine? The, the, the temple that Solomon built for us, he said he's going to pull it down. Because they can't understand. And if you care to know, the latest research says um, the building, the temple of Solomon is worth a trillion, trillion naira. Latest research. A what? A trillion naira. And a trillion naira is like a billion in a million way. A billion in a million times. Somebody used all that to build what? Temple. And somebody came, one young man, 30 what? 33. They said, I'll break down this temple and I'll build it in three days. Ah. He said, Your papa no gets. <laughs> Your papa no gets shishi. And you want to break down this building and build it in three days? They can't understand. So they accused him. They took him to court. Number four, he was falsely judged. Okay, we never got into this um, on Wednesday. Sorry, on Friday. He was falsely judged. They judged him. The judgment of Jesus was done in the night. Can you imagine? It was done not in the court, but in the house of the Sanhedrin. I have lawyers here. Okay, in the court of law, even the accused is permitted to have a what? A lawyer. Am I right? Who was the lawyer speaking for Jesus? No lawyer. Those accusing him have what? Weaknesses. Is this, is that. 
and he wasn't even allowed to what? To talk. Isaiah 53 says, they took him for slaughter, but he opened not his mouth. How can you be accusing somebody and speaking against the person and he's not saying anything? That should tell us there is something. So he was falsely judged. Of course, the people that accuse you have already set you up to judge you wrongly. Isn't it? That's it. He was falsely judged. Uh, number five, after the judgment, he was beaten. The beating was serious. We explained it in details on Friday. The beating was serious. In the history of the Jews, no one, no criminal takes more than one. But it took much more for me and for you. And the Bible says, by his stripes, we're what? We're healed. So no sickness have the right to cling to you anymore. Somebody pay the price for it. Can you say hallelujah to that? Hallelujah. All right. Number six, he was spat on. You know what it means to spit on somebody? That is the height of um, disdain. Thank you. That's the height of disdain. Pua! They spat on their savior. Ha! Huh. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. <laughs> In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be like Jesus. In my heart, <laughs> spit on me. I go tell you how you go work out. I'm not at that level yet. That's why we are praying to be like Him. Am I being practical? I paid your house rent. Can you imagine? I bought you a car. I paid your children's school fees. And the day I came to the house to check you, you shouted and shouted on me that I'm a criminal. If I'm a criminal, we are both criminals. Because out of the whatever, I built house for you. I bought car for you. I pay your children's school fees. So if you call me a criminal, then you have a criminal. In Yoruba land, because if he lifted the big oil from what is Aja? From the roof or wherever, or from the Aja. <laughs> and he's so heavy, if there is nobody to help him down, he's going to pawn him. You that helped me to spend the money, you are the greatest thief. But can you imagine that he gathered people, they started shouting and spat on him. And he said, don't worry. Ah. Police station. How many agree with what I'm talking about? But he took all those shame. He bared them. He bought them so that me, I will not see shame. Uh, what a blessing so we can pray against shame and resist shame today because somebody paid the price for it and lastly he was crucified ah, that's the, pain, the most painful part of it uh, he wasn't just killed he was murdered you understand that he was what talk to me church he was what he was murdered. Anytime I read um, that aspect of the scriptures, uh, I think the church of Nigeria should, should focus more on this, this season. You know why I'm saying that? Maybe it will it will help us to love ourselves more. He's a 33-year-old man, young and vibrant. Am I talking? He's, he's the peak of his youthful age, and yet he was beaten that much and nailed for doing what? Nothing. For doing nothing. 
But Isaiah 53 said, His father gave him up to be killed because he saw in him the rest of us. He gave the best so he can win the rest. He gave Jesus so he can win us. Can you imagine the millions of people and billions that are gathered in the world today celebrating his resurrection? He was crucified. So my Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, now go there. Matthew 28, the resurrection life. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great what? Headquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the what? The stone from the door and read the scripture. And what? Oh, I can't hear you. And what? People have even heard preachers on TV say the angel rose Jesus from the grave. Was that what the Bible said? The angel came down and rolled away the what? The stone and sat on it. Jesus rose from the grave by the Spirit of God. The Bible said he was raised from the grave by the glory of the Father. And who is the glory of the Father? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him on the third day and arose from the grave. The angel only came down and rolled away the stone. And after rolling away the stone, he sat on it. So what does that mean? Nothing can stop your greatness anymore. Are we together? The stone had been what? Rolled away. And I love the angel. He sat on it and said, Who will cover it again? <laughs> Let the person come. He sat on it. And his countenance was like what? Lightnings. Please, can we read the scriptures together? And his raiment white as what? As snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did what? Shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not. Unto the women, where were the men? Lord Joachimde. Okay, you went to work. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know what the declare said? They became as what? Dead men. Ah! That's revelation. <laughs> That the men were like dead men. Wow. Wow. That's a winger. Oh, God. But that's what the Bible says. <laughs> the men were like what? Dead men. They were like dead men, but the women were standing. But it was a man that died and rose from the grave. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, okay, it's not a debate. <laughs> and the angel said, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here for his reason. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. Hallelujah. The tomb was empty. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Can you go to 1 Corinthians 12? 1 Corinthians 15. Media, help me. 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 12. This is powerful. If the tomb had not been empty, <laughs> oh my God, 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 12. Everybody shall we read. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? 
verse 13 for if there be no resurrection of the dead then christ is not risen verse 14 and if christ be not risen then our preaching vain and your faith is also vain so i can't have a calling pastors we for no get job our preaching is vain and you can't be seated here too because they will challenge you see this is the difference between christianity and whatever religion you can call and please i like you to understand christianity is not a religion christianity is divinity in humanity is the life of god in human body and we get what i'm saying so it's cool they say what what how many religions do we have especially primary secondary uh, 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 Islamic religion, tradition, re traditional religion, and Christian religion. So we came into church with the mindset of what? Religion. Religion is, listen, what's the definition of religion? Religion is man trying to meet God. Religion is the principle of man in serving and meeting with an eternal God. But Christianity is God meeting with man. It's different though. I am not trying to be like him. He came down to accept me. I am, have not given him my life. He gave me his life. You know we are so proud I gave my life. What kind of nonsense life? The life you have destroyed with adultery and fornication. The life you have destroyed with sickness. The life you have destroyed with sin. Is that what you offer to him? No! I didn't give him my life. He gave me his what? His life. So he gave me his life. I substituted mine for his. So if Christ has not risen, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith, my faith, also becomes what? Faith. There can't be church. There can't be the power that heals the sick. That's why in the Old Testament, there are so many rituals. We can call them rituals now. Okay? When you are coming to church this morning, you bring a dove. Huh? You understand? You bring a dove. Maybe you will have brought um, what now? Camel. <laughs> Camel is not bad. <laughs> you will have brought a dove, um, or a lamb, a turtle dove or something. And um, all these men of God suited here looking good this morning you can't be wearing ties now you know your hands will be blooded and you know you know what i'm talking about because we will have done many ah many killings i tell you and all this fasting i i for don't fat oh. <laughs> eh? pastor timogo don't blow <laughs> no he has the tendency to be big if I don't blow. Because, you know, the Bible said something about Eli. After eating all those meat, ah, Papa Novi turned neck. You read the scriptures that eventually the day he decided to turn his neck that way, what happened to his neck? The neck broke and he died. It was too heavy. Because <laughs> Because after all said and done, you bring the sheep. We, we, according to the scriptures, you, you open it and you bring out the intestines, the kidneys and all that. You put it on the fire. Then you roast it. Bond offering. And when God smells the server, oh, he forgives your sin. But what happened to the body of the goat? There is mommy in the kitchen cooking... And daddy is waiting in the city room watching football. <laughs> and you get what I'm talking about? So, a lot of that. And you know, it was too much that even Ophni and Phineas, they went to brother you and said, Give help us make a fork that is long. They went to a good weather. And the weather made a good fork for them that is so long. And when the priest are, oh god of heaven we worship we sacrifice before they lifted up their eyes <laughs> the, 
they use their long fork to be and the priest oh god has taken it hallelujah <laughs> it's not god though <laughs> It's meat everywhere, blood everywhere. But thank God. Somebody went to the cross once, paid the price once, and now we can suit up and deck up and come to church. Nobody is coming with a goat, with sheep. Somebody rise up and shout, He's alive! Yeah. Ah, you may be seated. I pity the Old Testament priest, though. They get serious workers, serious wahala. Serious wahala. And you know, before you came into the church this morning, you will have seen um, a little water embracing lava. You know, so um, you wash your face because the eyes of God is holy. <laughs> and it does not behold what? Iniquity. So you have to wash because after killing on the animals, there are blood stains, right? So we have to wash and wash your nose. You know, some people still do that. I wash your nose, you wash your ears. You know, in the New Testament, that is just bath well. <laughs> Use some good soap and good cream and look good and come to church. Now we don't come with animals. We come with our hand lifted and we worship him. And yet our worship is what? Accepted. Because somebody went once and came out alive. Oh, what a joy. What a joy. What a joy. And you know because that was the order. Okay. Why does it have to be that somebody had to go in? In the Old Testament principles, the high priest, that's like the senior pastor, will have to go into the holies of holies and offer the sacrifice unto God. He himself will kill an animal for himself. Okay. All these pastors this morning, this morning, if it's Old Testament, I will have put blood on your ears. Yeah, before we serve God, we we'll anoint your ears with blood, we anoint your thumbs, and we anoint your what? Your toes, so you can hear God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my God. Serious work. Oh. You put. <laughs> but we can hear Him. Our hands have become the hands of power because somebody went to the cross once. In those days the high priest will go into the holies of holies he kills an animal for himself and while he's about going inside the old church will be praying Baba Baba before he enters into the holies of holies they will tie something around his leg and they put uh, all these small bears so as he's going it too will be woro woro sa woro ide so be shaking it so that the church can know Baba is still alive so he goes in and offer the sacrifice and all that but the day my jesus died and he shouted it is finished the bible said something happened the sunday morning he rose from the grave and the scripture said the veil that separated the holies of holies from the church the veil that separated god from his people the veil that limited our entrance into the spirit realm was torn from top to bottom from that day i have the access into his presence hallelujah i can be in my city room and i'm in the presence of god i can be in my bedroom and come into the presence of god i can be in the examination hall and enter somebody shout he's alive see ministry becomes easy now i tell you those days can be very tough if paradventure there is a little sin in his life and he has not confessed the sin the angel that covers the shekinah glory will strike him Bam! he will die there and nobody dares enter to bring him out <laughs> if you enter you are a gunner so you know what they are going to do they will pull him out with the rope and because he died the whole sin of Israel for that year is not redeemed. That shows that year they will see Wahala. 
you understand Yoruba movies. <laughs> Eko, Niko, <be> Eko. <laughs> there can be real things alive, problems all around because one person did not clean himself. Thank God. See, Jesus is not just um, it's not just a name that we use to cast out devil. It's a picture of love. It's a picture of what? What manner of love is this? That a man will give his what? His life for his what? Friends. We are not slaves. We are not slaves. I'm a child of God. What the slave does not have access to, the son can play with. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. I'm not a slave. I'm not a slave. He paid the price. I came out of the shit. I'm his son. Praise God. And the fact that you are his son doesn't mean you can err. And when your son err against you, don't do that again. He's still your son anyway. But when a slave goes beyond his level, that day he leaves the house. Some slaves are even killed. Thank God. Thank God. Why he has to die? Number one, Jesus really must die. Why? Because all have sinned. Romans 3 23. All have what? Sin and fall short of the glory. All. All is everybody with an exception of nobody. You say, are you telling me this, Pastor? Yeah. Are you telling me this man of God? All have what? So he had to come. He had to come. He had to come. Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is what? Death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life through who? Through Christ Jesus. Number two, why does he have to die? He had to die to take our place. He had to die to take what? Our place. Our place where? He had to take my place in the grave. He had to take my place in suffering and affliction. While he was being slapped, he was in my place. While they spat on him, he was in our place. While they kicked him and nailed him, he was in my place. So he had to die so he can take my what? I can hear you. So he can take my what? My place. First John chapter 4, verse 10. First John 4 10. Hearing is love. Not that we loved God, but that he what? He loved us and sent his son to be the what? the propitiation for our sin. So, I am not the one that loves him as it were. He loves me. Mm. He loves me. I cannot say why. Do you know the song? He loves me. I cannot say why. On Calvary tree he suffered for me he loves me i cannot say why. so i didn't love him like that don't think i love him that way is his love for me that is that big can i tell you something when you go through some thick time when there are troubles and challenges don't focus on your own love for him focus on is love for you that is what can keep you are you getting what i'm saying because my love for him okay um pastor benga please come drop your phone this is jesus almighty hallelujah I'm the son is Jesus okay we are going somewhere my love for him is like holding him hmm? yeah keep moving sir just go anywhere just move 
she be I'm the one holding him. And wherever he goes, I follow. But as I was following him, I was looking at uh, what's your name? George Brace. Wow. Wow. I love I love his suit. That's a good suit. You keep moving. That's a good suit. Wow. Because I'm the one holding him. That's my love. Something else has what? Attracted me. It is first attraction because before it becomes distraction. Are you getting it? It first of all what? Attracted me when I responded to that attraction. Then to him, it became what? Distraction. Now see. Now the love of God. If I focus on his love for me, then you hold my hand. Hold me tight. Yeah. I mean, if you know, this is a whole world of difference. Keep moving. <laughs> Can you see? Because he's the one that loves me. He's the one dragging me. No matter the attraction, I refuse to be what? Distracted. Thank you, sir. So, when we go through life trouble, don't focus on how much you love him. Focus on how much he loves you. That is the only way you can survive. See, we can speak in tongues and cast out devils. We can do all manner when you are in the spirit. But when your flesh hits you, when you are alone, sometimes you forget you can even speak in tongues. Uh, am I talking to people? Sometimes you even forget there is a name. At that time, it's no more you holding him. It is the Lord holding me. So I am here standing. Not because I love him so much. But I am here standing because what? He loves me so much despite the attraction and the distraction it kept dragging me are you guess what i'm saying that's the beauty of the resurrection of jesus that's the beauty of his love for us um in some portions in matthew in the gospel you will see if you don't forgive your father in heaven will not forgive you but do you know that was before the death that was before the death of jesus after the death of Jesus, after the cross, the order changed. The order became because he forgave me, I can now what? Forgive. If you have not tasted the love of Christ, you can't truly really love. It's not possible. And don't think everyone that is a pastor have seen the love of Christ. Don't think anyone, everyone that has spiritual gift has seen the love of Christ. Is it? In my work with God, I'm beginning to understand that spiritual gift is not equal to salvation. Spiritual gift is not equal to the love of God. People can demonstrate spiritual gift and yet what they want is to take something from you. Love with strings attached. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So he had to die so he can take my place. Number three, he had to die to bring me into his glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> he had to die to bring me into glory. So, now I have a glorious life in Christ Jesus. How many of you have glorious life in Christ Jesus? Things, uh, uh, somebody said, um, we don't know what tomorrow holds. It's a lie. I know what tomorrow holds. I don't know about you. I do from the scripture i know my tomorrow is good the path of a righteous man is as a shining light how does it shine brighter and brighter i can face tomorrow because he what he lives because he's in me i started praying a certain prayer uh, for some couple of days i was uh, it was all over my spirit all through the night and it's simple say god enter into me bodily From last month actually the bible said and the holy ghost sat on them how 
bodily. Huh? Literally speaking, he sat upon them. Oh, what a glorious life. Let's see Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, for verse 10. Hebrews 2, 10. For it became him for whom a whole things, and by him are what? Read the scriptures. And by him are what? All things in bringing. Where are the daughters? I told you I was coming back for you. Yeah, you saw him first at resurrection. Brought, he brought sons to glory. Abina. In bringing many what? All. <laughs> In bringing many what? Many sons. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> bringing many sons unto glory. So, he died, he left his glory in heaven. He came to the world, he took my place, he died so I can come out of shame and enter into the glory that is substituted. So the scripture says, henceforth, judge we no man according to the flesh. Anyone looking at your bank account to determine your life has made a mistake. Everybody looking at the car you drive to judge you had made a mistake. Why? Because there is something about you that is bigger than driving a car. He has brought me into glory. The scripture says, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him. Glorious life. Glorious life. I am called into glory. I'm called into glory. I'm called into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through what through what through suffering through suffering so he came because we have he died because we have all seen he died because he will take in order to take our place number three he died to bring us into glory and number four he died to destroy death he died to destroy death the resurrection life he died that he might destroy death. Somebody defined death as the gradual exit of life from a body. Not instant. Gradual what? Exit of what? Life from a body. What a painful experience. I sat there watching my dad going gradually. And doctor was okay. The lungs packed up, but he's still alive. After some hours, say this also is gone, but he's still alive. That is life going how? Gradually. So the moment a man dies is not the moment he started dying. Death is a gradual exit of life from a body but when the power of god comes he restores life back to the dead cells and gradually the hands that can't be moved start moving again that's the resurrection life so in the name of jesus i speak today any power of hell that is trying to shut down any department of your life by the power of resurrection we rebuke them today we command life to be restored into everyone's life we command life to be restored into everyone's body in the name of jesus hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 as we depart from the first service hebrews 2 verse 14 look at this for as much then as children we, his children, are partakers of what? Flesh and blood. He also, who is that he also? Jesus. He also himself likewise did what? Took part of the same. That through what? His death. He might destroy him 
that had the power of death that he is who? The devil. Verse 15. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. But not anymore. Oh my God. I say not anymore. We were subject unto bondage. But he came to break the power of death. So the morning he rose from the grave he said to the grave oh grave where is your power death where is your strength he collected the victory and came to me i don't know about you he came to me and gave me the victory i said go now in my name cast out devils heal the sick raise the dead freely you are given freely also gave this is the benefit of his life we can stand and resist the devil nobody had the effrontery to resist the devil before his death but he has given us a new life this life is superior to sickness is superior to poverty is superior to barrenness is superior to death so maybe you are here today there is a problem you are facing in your life or wherever you are watching from i like you to know you shouldn't go ahead with that sickness mm -mm, you shouldn't barrenness is never your portion you can come out of that problem today why because he took your place and he gave us life what a blessing after ministering on air on monday um the program was over i was about leaving the studio and somebody called said i watched your program last week i'm so so pastor this 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 happened to me this can you pray and after the prayers three days later he called again and said sir i want to tell you i am getting better I said, can I keep calling you? I said, oh, keep calling me, sir. Here is a pastor preaching on the altar. All of a sudden, was attacked. And he went down his stroke. And was watching on her. And he saw. And he said, the spirit of God told me to call you. I've never seen him. Never met him. And may never meet him. That's the power of television so we are not going there to prove we can talk we are going there because there are many we may never see but we will always be blessed he said three days later i said pastor i'm getting better he said can i keep calling i said go ahead why not he's getting better not because pastor prayed he's getting better because somebody paid the price you are here believing for fruitfulness is the last day you'll be buried can we stand to our feet with assurance of faith and go ahead and begin to speak life into every part of your life into your body into your system please can i have to keep everybody go ahead and pray speak life for if the spirit that raised christ from the dead if the same spirit lives in you it will quicken your mortal body it will give life to your womb it will give life to your business can you go ahead and talk to him please go ahead and pray Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Say, I receive life. You are believing for fruitfulness. Lay hands on yourself and pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive life in my body. I receive.